Okay. So the 670 CCT was installed in our hospital in June 2016. There was a lot of preparation and we started to negotiate with the administration in our hospital um, during 2015. We use it in daily practice, every day. We did some comparative studies in between the analog system and the digital system. And um, I am very proud that my center serves as an evaluation center and a demo center for G Healthcare for the nuclear medicine. So as you see, we have a lot of nice uh, tools from GE, almost everything. Um, and so the most recent installation was the CZT Spec CT in June. And then uh, I had a little bit of money left and uh, I bought the PET CT IQ3, which is a BGO PET, installed three weeks ago. We work with two uh, full-time medical doctors, one physicist, Jos, and then some technologists and secretaries. So when I went to my director last year to, to ask for a new spec CT, I had some criteria. And the first one, of course, was general purpose. We are a general hospital. Better lesion detection, of course. Had to be better. Patient comfort, it's important. Faster than what we have now for the comfort of the patient, but also to have a high patient turnover. Lower adjective dose, if possible. Quantifications, because you want to do uh, metabolic treatment in the future. High productivity, reliable, quick maintenance. And of course, in accordance with the hospital policy. So now we go from the analog age to the digital age with the semiconductor, uh, semiconductor radio, radiation detector, solid state detector. And you all know the old and the good photomultiplier, and now we have this small, fancy solid state detector. You can see it on the boot, it's really small. A little bit about techniques, and what you see on the left is the actual system we have with the photomultipliers, which is an indirect system. We have the gamma ray hitting the crystal. The signal is transformed into a photon that goes in any direction. It passes the kind of light guides to hit the photon multiplier. Several photon multipliers. This photon is amplified, transformed into an electric signal, and then via interpolation, an image is made. The semiconductor technology is straightforward. You have the gamma ray detecting the detect, um, hitting the detector, immediately changed into an electrical signal by electron pairing. It hits one pixel. It is rigidus collimation, so one hit hits one pixel, and straightforward the image is made. You see on the left hand the concept of the usual gamma camera with the photomultipliers, and on the left and the right side with the uh, digital detectors. What you have on the left side is a lot of dead space. You don't have it with the digital, why? Because it's rectangular and we don't have no dead space anymore. We have an increase in effective detector surface of 25%. One detector with 130 CCT modules, each one with 256 pixels. One pixel is 2.46 millimeters. And this slide is quite important that is the energy resolution in between the NIE detector, the photomultiplier, and the digital detector. And what you see is the sharper energy resolution with the new technology, with the digital technology. That is very important because we can better differentiate, delineate different energies, and we have sharper images. And I will show you that with this dual isotopes, 3D parathyroid, this case is done with the photomultiplier, sodium iodine, and you see on your left hand the image with iodine 1 to 3, 159 keV, and on the right hand you see the image with technetium MIBI. And what you see on the left hand, if you take the middle row, the, um, the spec images with the green arrow, in fact, it is the window for iodine 1 to 3, but you have noise from the technetium. Um, signal. So the image is not that sharp. Sometimes it can be confusing. Let's switch to the 
digital detector where you have sharp energy and you don't have any contamination in your iodine window from the technetium because of the energy resolution that is better. Smaller detection design, smaller gantry. Um, finally, it's a massive machine, but that's not our fault. That is the fault of the big CT scan. Important is the edge of the detector. With the usual detectors we have now for sodium iodine, you have a border of 7.5 centimeters. With the new one, with the digital one, you have a detector border of 2.5 centimeters. Why is that important? It's important if we scan brain or if we want to scan lungs. Because you can easily put the brain in the field of view and it's easy to put the lungs in the field of view. You gain five centimeters. So, image quality. Static image of the hands, photomultiplier on the left side and CZT technology on the right side. And what you see is that you have a sharper image and small lesions, like you can see in the wrist, appears better than on the, um, on the NIE system. Same for total body scan, anterior view and posterior view, NIE and CZT. And you see that on the CZT, the image is sharper. Same patient, same acquisition time. Spectre of the knees, same patient, uh, done on um, photomultiplier and then afterwards done on the CZT on different days. And what you see is a sharper image and a sharper delineation of the, small, of the lesions. You can better define the lesions. Inspect image. And you have more resolution. It's really important to have better resolution because you can pinpoint on really small lesions like you see here on this image. But you can see that the active focus is not the facet joint, but this is joint disease and not, this is bone disease and not the joint that is affected. Brain study. Above we have a brain study done with sodium iodine. It's a beautiful image. Why? Because we use a fan beam on our gamma camera. The role under is with the CCT digital images done with parallel hole and faster. So image quality is the same in between CCT parallel hole collimator and NIE fan beam, but with the CCT technology we work faster. That's a beautiful image that we have. And then they developed very nice stuff, very nice quantification programs brain to um, evaluate activity in the brains. So now, this image quality, do we need it? Do we need it? I think we need it. It's like everything in daily life. When you buy a new television, you will buy now high definition television. If you buy a new photo camera, you will buy a high definition camera with more pixels. And that's like the picture I made yesterday. Um, both in the same place. One in low resolution and the other one in high resolution, and I think this explains everything. So we have better image quality, but as explained by my colleague, we also can reduce the dose or work faster. Three bone scans. One is full-time acquisition, two are with reduced time acquisition. And you almost cannot see the difference anterior view, posterior view, and look at the neck, there's a small facet joint disease, and it's the same on the three acquisitions. One is 100%, second one is one-third time reduction, and the third one in the middle is 50% time reduction. So reducing the time doesn't change the, uh, the image quality. That's another case. One is full-time, one is one-third reduction, the other one is 50% reduction. You cannot say which one is the reduced one, which one is the normal time. Posterior view. The middle is 100% normal time. Right is 50% decrease of time. And it's the same image quality. 
We did some evaluation on SPECT, CDT SPECT. Above is a full-time acquisition and under is one-third reduction of time. And again, it is the same image quality. And this one-third of time reduction is only the beginning. Another case with the food, sometimes very difficult. And image quality is again the same. This is the spine, several lesions, time reduction of one third. And clinical is the same. So, CZT and planner, what we validated now for bone studies is that we can reduce 33% time reduction, it's one third. So, if you want to have it in numbers, what we do for bone scan is uh, step and shoot. For each field, normally we would use 150 seconds for each field. We scan the patient five fields, which will do 12 minutes. Um, on CCT, when we reduce with one third, it would be 100 seconds per field. SPECT, 50 seconds. And with CCT, we would go to 10 seconds. Which makes that with the photomultiplier, the analog system, we would do a bone scan, total bone scan, with SPECT in 27 minutes. Now we can reduce to 18 minutes. And as I told you, this is only the beginning. Next step will be to reduce to 50%. And I have seen images from my colleague, Professor Benerger from Lyon, going lower than 50%. We can translate that to dose reduction instead of time reduction. What we use normally for bone scan is 20 millicuries or 740 megabecquerels, which would give a load to the patient of 4.22 millisievert. If we reduce by one third, it's only 2.81 millisievert for a bone scan. So the conclusions now after four months using the CCT technology is that we have a significant improved image quality, resolution, and lesion detectability, reduction of acquisition time and radioactive dose without compromising the diagnostic accuracy. And now we go to one third, but I think with half, it will be the same conclusion. Further reduction acquisition time is under validation. We have improved patient comfort because it's less irradiated or we work faster. And it's certainly an important value for my clinical practice. And I thank again GE, and I thank the whole staff from my hospital, and I thank Jos. So, Professor uh, De Klerk, between uh, time and dose, how do you make the, the decision? Well, that's, that's, that's a good question. At this moment, we, we uh, are still validating this system and we uh, focus on time reduction um, to do uh, faster scans and to have a high patient turnover with our system. I think we will have to choose um, our patients. I think for elderly patients and cancer patients or ill patients, we can go for time reduction because they have to work fast. And irradiation of old patients of old patient and cancer patients, that's not an issue. But for young patients, young women and children, there I think we should go for dose reduction. Okay, very clear. Thank you.